So I finally have seen the light. that I really intended on making back in February. Um, and the reason was I bought a Hardinge DSM-59 back in, I'd say mid-February of this year. Um, when I bought the machine, several people told me, warned me, don't use a VFD to, uh, to run this machine. You need a rotary phase converter because with a Hardinge DSM, you can slam it into high gear, into low gear, forward and reverse. And they said, you know, you possibly could damage or blow up your VFD. Yikes, right? So, oh, here, go, here we go. We got to get ourselves a, uh, a rotary phase converter. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who, who, you know, who are just like I was, right? Was. I feared rotary phase converters. Everyone that I heard was loud and clunky and they, they sounded like, uh, like complete junk. But seeing, you know, American Rotary all over YouTube, and I met Chris last year at Stan's Bash, so it was pretty much a no-brainer. So I picked one up, I hooked it up because I had to basically hit the ground running. I had a, a series of jobs come in earlier this year. So basically I had to hook up the rotary phase converter, get the machine up and running, and, and get to making parts. Now that I finished all these, uh, all the jobs, I cleared my plate, I got some time now. I had, the, I had the rotary phase converter basically just temporarily set up in a corner. Nothing was permanent. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to mount it on the wall. Um, you know, I'm going to disassemble it, you know, off camera. And then we're going to mount it as if we're doing a fresh install. But it kind of is going to be a fresh install. But, it, you know, we're going to put it on a, a board. We're going to mount it up. Um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to hook it up, how simple it is. We'll, we'll hook it up, we'll run it, and uh, uh, without any more babbling, let's get started. So the model that I got here is the ADX, and it's a 10 horsepower. So when you get the box, uh, you'll get a motor, you'll get your, you know, the actual phase converter, and these instructions. Now when I first got mine, I hooked it up, and the motor was bad. I originally had an 8 horsepower and the, I don't know if it was the bearings, there was just something wrong, it was making a screeching sound. I called up American Rotary, I mean, without a blink of an eye, they had another one shipping out, I think, the next day. Um, they were very friendly, they, they actually, they were, they were a bit apologetic that the, the motor was bad. Um, you don't find that every day with, uh, you know, with companies. So, needless to say, the customer service with American Rotary is off the charts. Really good company. They they definitely care about their customers. I didn't feel rushed on the phone because I did have some questions. Called up, you know, uh, with sizing of, of the, the SO cord and the breaker and whatnot. I kind of read through, you know, I read through the directions and I just wanted to have that kind of second set of eyes, you know. I wanted somebody to make sure, you know, to kind of sign off on, yes, you're doing it correct. So, you know, I, I was a bit of a baby and I called them and just asked some questions. But again, they treated me really well, took my call, um, and I believe the call, I, I called them late at night too because, you know, I work on a lot of my stuff, you know, in, in the later hours. And I was surprised to get somebody on the phone to answer my questions. So, again, customer service, top shelf, you know, really good. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to read through these instructions. Now everybody will say that on their video, it's kind of like this echoing uh, statement. Read the directions. Your shop is different than my shop and it's different than his and her shop. Your electrical needs are different, so you got to go through this, you got to read it, you got to kind of understand what's happening and you know what the what the rotary phase converter is actually doing. Now, if you if you don't know you know, you have power that comes from your uh, from your your single phase, your home power. Okay, that comes into the rotary phase converter. That feeds this idler motor, which generates three phase power back up into the unit. And then you can either feed this unit to a um, a sub panel, you know, and feed different machines, 
or you could literally just put like a plug on the end, which I did, and plug your machine right into it. So it's expandable and it's really simple. When I tell you that, you know, you, you get a machine and you plug, the, you plug your machine, your three-phase machine, right into an electrical box and you turn it on, I'm sorry, but there's nothing better than that. Um, you know, some notes that I took when I installed mine. Again, I don't want you to pay attention too much to, to all this because when you get yours, you're going to read your instructions and you're going to make your own notes and you're going to operate under all of your specific shop needs. So just to reiterate, you want to read the directions thoroughly and really get a good understanding of what you're doing. We got the warranty card here and some information on the Baldor motor. So now I've removed the uh, rotary phase converter from its temporary spot. I'm going to show you how the motor's wired up and then how we connect um, all the terminals and how it gets connected into the box and then we're going to run it. Before we connect the rotary phase converter, we're going to mount it onto the wall. And I'm choosing, choosing this location right about here. I think this is pretty good, at least for now. Um, I bought a piece of wood, and what we're going to do is we're going to paint it and get it prepped so we could put, this to, we could put the rotary phase converter onto the, the board and then you know position the board anywhere we need to over here on the wall. So I chose this uh, Rust-Oleum satin finish. You guessed it, machine gray. Matches uh, various machines here in the shop. And I got this little piece of wood here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it, and then we'll cut it down to size uh, on a wood bandsaw and get it all formatted. So right now, let's get her painted. Now I'm spraying this very heavy because plywood just drinks paint right in. That comes with the kit is a Gentech, and Gentech is really by Baldor, so it's really a Baldor motor. And this guy, this particular one, is a 10 horsepower motor, uh, 230 volt, you know, three phase. And this is really what's going to be generating the third phase of the uh, of the power. So I'm not going to go into great detail here about how to wire the motor because there's a wiring diagram that's right above it, and the instructions. Um, will do a way better job than I'll explain but basically you know I followed the directions complete Th these connections are all bolted together with uh, nuts and bolts and they're all taped off okay so basically follow the directions that come with your kit and do a good connection like this and you want to use the nuts and bolts like this because they're not going to vibrate loose you know, and cause a short or something like that so let me, uh, let me put these wires back in here and get, in, get this all buttoned up.
have the cord installed for the idler motor and I just basically trimmed the different leads to size just so they fit in pretty nicely. So we're going to have uh, the black go on top here, the red, and then the white, which is the third leg of the idler motor. This is a double junction block right here. So the third phase will come in here and then the third phase wire over here, this is from the load, all right? This is the plug that you would plug a machine into, so it's going to connect into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just connect these up right now, fairly straightforward. So this wire right here is the third leg that comes out of the load, the three-phase load, right? That's the thing you're going to plug your machine into. In my case, it's a socket. And we're going to tighten that down nice. <clears throat> now we're going to put the two grounds together. Start to cinch these down. <clears throat> All right, that's in there nice. Yeah. Now let's get the two power leads from the uh, from the load and connect them to the other side. So we got the SO cord coming down now from the breaker. It's eight gauge, four wire. Although I'm only using three, I'm using a ground and I'm using the two hot wires. I cut the white one back. It's not even being used. So again, up here there are two double junction blocks and. I've chosen to use black on top, um, red on the bottom, just like on the other side. I think the, the instructions uh, suggested that as well. But again, I, I read the, the instructions. I'm going with my kit. Your kit might be different, so this is just the way I'm doing it. Um, and it's it's pretty simple. You know, we're going to put the, um, the SO cord from the breaker on the top ones, and then we're going to use the black and the red from the load on the bottom. So. Pretty straightforward, let's get them connected. And then the ground, we're going to just curl over and send it down in the bottom. I don't like the way that's going in. I'm going to open it up a little bit more. don't like wires, you know, little pieces of the strands sticking out. It's dangerous and it's a pet peeve of mine. There we go. All right, now here we're connecting the load. And this is, again, this is the wires coming from the SO cord that is attached to the machine plug. 
goes in there. You know, I gotta say that the instructions that comes with these kits couldn't be easier. You know, um, very, very simple. Takes all the headaches away, takes all the worrying out. But you do gotta read the instructions and if you have any questions, just call them up. I had a couple of questions. I spoke to Chris. Helped me out, got me on my way, clearing up some uh, questions I had with the gauge of the SO cord. All right, so we're all connected here now. Um, we're gonna go over uh, up to the electric box and I'm going to uh, pop the breaker in. We'll get the lid for this and connect, uh, where is it, this guy right here. These, this is the on and off switch and the light. We'll get this connected and uh, we'll give it a spin. This is one of these like twist switches. Uh, oh God, I forgot what these are called, the proper electrical term. Uh, some kind of block, terminal block, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so we just kind of pop that guy in there. Okay, and you can see it's working when I turn it. And we put the Okay, now that the switches are all connected, it's time to button it, button it all up. get one started. Fine wipe down. Okay, let's look upon the work there. So there's our lead, right? We're gonna plug our machines into that. Here we have the idler motor. We got the RPC mounted to the wall, right below the box. Yeah, that's that's nice. Nice and quiet. So I'm just I'm just talking to you normal. The motor's just sitting there humming along. It's got its rubber feet on there, um, taking up any kind of vibration. It's level. Let's plug in the hardinge. So there's a twist lock. There you have it power all right guys well that's it and i hope you enjoyed the video and and i actually hope that maybe um if you're on the fence for rotary face converters or if you were dead against them i i hope this might have opened up your eyes like mine have really become i think these things are um they're the, they're the way to go honestly especially from a growth perspective because if you get a rotary face converter and you hook up a sub panel, you could just grow from there. You don't need separate VFDs. So again, I, I hope this kind of shed some light, maybe demystified a couple of things. And um, you know, apologies for this coming so late. Again, you know, when I got it, I had to start and, and make some parts. Um, apologies for my voice. I'm just getting over being sick. And that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.